Good morning and welcome to WWDC. Let's get started with iOS. Our new release is iOS 14. Let's dig in starting with the home screen. Wouldn't it be great if there were a way to organize all of those apps without doing a thing? Well, this year we're doing just that with something called the App Library. You can see that all of my apps are automatically organized here. So I can tap into a category like Apple Arcade and see all of my apps in that category. Let's turn to widgets. So let's swipe over to Today View and take a look at our new widgets. They're just beautiful. They now come in a variety of sizes. I'm just gonna tap and hold on the weather widget and I can drag it out of Today View and onto my home screen. The gallery is a great place to explore widgets. Now, when I tap on one, I can actually page through all of the different sizes available. With the Smart Stack, I can easily swipe through widgets to pick just the one I want for the moment. So in the morning, I can get my news briefing. Throughout the day, find out when I have a meeting coming up. We're also bringing picture in picture to iPhone. Now check this out. When I swipe to go home, the video automatically goes into picture in picture right over the home screen. If I wanna make it bigger, I can even pinch to zoom. We've completely redesigned the Siri experience. If you say, Open Safari, Siri pops up at the bottom of the screen and instantly launches the app. Or if you ask for information, like the weather, results appear at the top of the screen, just like a notification. Communicating with someone in another language, Siri can help with translations. We're introducing a new app called Translate, and it can work completely offline. You can translate your text and voice between any combination of these 11 languages. Just tap on the microphone and say, what are your store hours? ¿Cuáles son las horas de su tienda? And just turn the phone to landscape to open conversation mode with just a single microphone button because the app intelligently detects the language spoken and shows translation on the correct side of the screen. We are introducing a new way to let you stay connected to your most important conversations by letting you pin them at the top of your list so you can always get to them. And you can see messages as they come in with a beautiful animation on the pin. When you're talking to a group, sometimes there's so much going on, it can be hard to keep track of the conversation. First, we're adding inline replies that let you reply directly to a specific message. You can view replies in the full conversation, or you can view them as their own thread so you can focus in on the specific topic. We're introducing mentions. With mentions, you can just type someone's name to direct a message to them. And now you have the ability to only be notified when you're mentioned in the group conversation. We're adding a dedicated cycling option to Maps, which allows users to ride their bike along bike lanes, paths, and roads. Maps takes elevation into account to let you know if you're in for a challenging uphill workout or a leisurely flat ride. With iOS 14, we're bringing cycling to New York City, LA, the San Francisco Bay Area, along with a number of cities in China, like Shanghai and Beijing. Today, no matter what you want to do, there's an app for that. But what if you don't have the app you need right when you need it? Like when you need to pay for parking? Well, now there's an app clip for that. An app clip is a small part of an app. It's light and fast and easy to discover. They start with this card, which quickly pops up, and with just a tap, you can launch the app clip. You don't need to enter credit card numbers because app clips can use Apple Pay for payments. The best way to discover app clips will be with a new Apple-designed app clip code. So when you see one, you'll know that there's an app clip waiting for you. Wouldn't it be great to even more quickly and easily see a summary of an app's privacy practices before you download it? We're going to require each developer to self-report their practices. We're going to put this information on product pages in the App Store. So for each app, you can see highlights of their privacy information before you download it. 